Welcome, everyone, uh, to Scouts Eye on College Football. This is SEC Football and Beyond, as we'll take you through week four. Can you believe it? Week four of the college football season? Man, I mean, this it flies by, doesn't it? Where I looked at the calendar, it's October coming up? Really? How did that happen? Well, anyway, we've got, as you know, we've got uh, some interesting games uh, the, to break down. We've got some... Some soft games, too, um, but we've got uh, some intriguing games. I think Missouri-Auburn intriguing for different reasons, two teams that are struggling. Of course, Florida-Tennessee, the spotlight of the country there. That is going to be big. I do think that um, um, Tech, Arkansas, Texas A&M, also very big. But it's uh, it's one of those weeks where you got a couple of games – you know, that are really good with really good teams and then maybe one other game that's intriguing. And then the rest of them are really tune-ups for the meat of the SEC schedule. So we're going to get down uh, in deep in detail of breaking down these games for you at LandryFootball.com. So make sure that you check that out. Get your football season sale. Take advantage of that. Very inexpensive. Um, it's $69 for the entire 12 months get you through the football season, get you through recruiting, get you through the draft, get you through you know, all of the NFL season, of course, free agency, and all the previews and the spring practice, roster analysis, inside information on transfer portal, you name it, all of that stuff. So it's a great way to, to get on the inside and see the game and get the information from a coaching and scouting perspective that you can't get anywhere else. So take advantage of that. If you want to try it out for a month, do it. You want to try it out for six months and just get the rest of the football season through the Super Bowl or what have you, you can do that as well. Whatever is your option, check it out at LandryFootball.com and you can get detailed film room analysis from a coaching and scouting perspective. Also want to remind you to subscribe, like, and share the Off the Hook YouTube channel channel and the Landry Football Podcast Network. Subscribe, like, and share it. If you do that, it really helps us to expand and grow and it'll give an opportunity to give you more shows like this that'll be intriguing. We're going to go through the matchups a little bit. It's Mississippi State coming off a performance in which they did not play well against LSU. Uh, a lot of drop balls. Were completely out coached, out schemed. LSU did a tremendous job there. Um, you know, um, it, it's a rebound type of game. Now, a little bit about Bowling Green. You know, um, it kind of like lost in a shuffle, and you can't use the transitive property that doesn't really apply as people like to try to do it. Marshall was able to shock Notre Dame, and it was Bowling Green that beat Marshall a week later. Um, so, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, Bowling Green is better than Notre Dame. And, you know, no, I, it, it doesn't work that way. Bowling Green was better than Marshall, got Marshall in uh, out of sorts a little bit in the week after their game against Notre Dame. But a little bit about them. They've got an offense that moves the football pretty well from a Mac level standpoint. They're averaging over 300 yards per game. Uh, they're plus three in the turnover margin. And, you know, it is um, – they're capable. They surprised Minnesota last year. Came up with a 34-31 victory out of nowhere. So they're good enough to get your attention. They're good enough to provide a push. Their pass rush has been really good. Their takeaways, as I alluded to, very good. And if Matt McDonald can get into a groove – it could get interesting. Mississippi, this Mississippi State defense is really good. LSU kind of cracked the cold a little bit, but they didn't have a lot of success. It was coaching that put themselves in a position to get some matchup advantages with neighbors against um, uh, the, 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 the Mississippi State secondary. I don't think – Bowling Green's going to be able to do that here. But Bowling Green defense didn't do anything against Eastern Kentucky. 
and it was a wild 59-57 loss. UCLA roared back through the air in a 45-17 win. So look for Mississippi State to kind of take it out on Bowling Green here. Um, I think that um, we're going to kind of see, you know, a different look here. Mississippi State was challenged in a way by LSU that Bowling Green's not going to be able to get it done. So I think they'll be fully engaged in this game after a loss. So the question is, will they get it done by 30? Uh, you want to go to LandryFootball.com and see what we think about that and the margin of victory in which I think Mississippi State's going to win. Kent State at Georgia. Listen, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's 46-point margin. A little bit about Kent State if you want to know. They have an offense that's pretty good uh, in, in their league. Um, uh, you know, even in losses to like Washington and Oklahoma, the offense moved the football a little bit. They were pretty effective converting on third downs. Uh, obviously, George is a different level. This is going to be a bloodbath. Um, you know, uh, it, it's just one of those things where they will make this game what they want to make it. They don't appear to be sleepwalking in any games. But the kiss, the question is, is it going to be 46 points or more? You, you would think so. But let's take a closer look at it for you and give you a feel for where you might want to go over and under and where this game might be in terms of the lopsided nature of a Georgia victory, but, but by how much. We've got that for you at LandryFootball.com. I tell you a game that's interesting. It's not a great game. I'm not selling you on the quality of the game or the quality of the teams in it. But I will tell you that I think that uh, Missouri-Auburn is very intriguing. Um, it's a dangerous zone for Brian Harson. You know that he's gone. I mean, that's only a matter of time. This game, a loss like this at home to Missouri, could make the move immediate during the season. Um, which is, from a storyline standpoint, might be intriguing. Missouri who is another team that is not the same situation. They're two and one. I don't think they're particularly well coached. I, I think Eli Drinkwich is going to survive, but I think they're starting to figure him out a little bit over there. And I think a loss like this would be an ugly loss. You've got an Auburn team that's down. And I, I think there are other games that Missouri could lose that could be costly. If they take care of business against the, band of Bills of the world and maybe South Carolina, then I think those are the games that could be like really costly for Eli. This won't be overly costly, but it'll be one of those that'll be looked at cross-eyed and saying, really? Can't go in and beat an Auburn team that's struggling? Uh, Auburn's got some issues right now. Their offense struggled against San Jose State. It didn't do enough to, to even keep up, be competitive in that 41-12 loss at home to Penn State. The defense is not really playing as well as they're, I think, capable of. Um, T.J. Finley and Robbie Ashford have combined to throw for just two touchdown passes, six picks in three games. The defensive front's not doing enough to get in the backfield, specifically some of the defensive issues I'm seeing on tape. And there's problems holding on to the ball. Turnovers are killer. You can't survive that. Um, and, and so is the ability to keep the chains moving. I mean, you, you've got to allow your defense a little bit of a chance to have some success. Um, Auburn's controlling the clock for just 28 minutes per game. And even with its own concerns, Missouri offense is holding the football a little bit better, 34 minutes per game. So game control, not really good for Auburn. Not keeping the ball a lot, and turn a lot of it is turning the football over too. It's an it's difficult combination. Um, now, this is a game in which Auburn and Tank Bigsby can start to take it over. Find yourself here, Auburn, in the run game. Missouri's only faced one team that can run in any way, and Kansas State went off. 
for 35 yards and a 40 to 12 win in a game in which Kansas State didn't even play all that well. Now, Auburn couldn't get the Penn State game under control and had to change up his plan, but the ground attack did work against San Jose State and Mercer, obviously. And so they're able to control those games. And uh, in this game, they need to work the run game. That's what they do when they are successful. It's because of the offensively, it's because of the run, and it's going to help their defense, and you can run against Missouri. Missouri hasn't turned the football over, but it's not airtight. The special teams at Missouri has been a disaster. The penalties keep coming. And so, you know, Auburn, I think, has got a chance to get right here. Um, They're not creating its own breaks. They're causing problems. An ugly loss. Let's look at that as an ugly loss that got lopsided because Auburn can't keep up with the passing game. And once they lost any ability in game control, that game got out of hand. I think against Missouri, it could be a different matchup. Missouri's not as good as Penn State. Um, and, and while they're not turning it over, they're making mistakes so they can capitalize on some of those Missouri mistakes if those continue. Keep it simple. Don't force the football. Look, if you can run the football, Missouri's, and this is in any game, Missouri's going to have to overplay the run by putting extra numbers in the box, and that allows you to have some success throwing it. I think Auburn might be able to get them one at home. Might be a little close. We've got uh, an official word on that over at LandryFootball.com. Florida at Tennessee. Uh, harken back to the old days in the 90s, right? Nah, not really. Um, but it's at least exciting because it is a game in which Tennessee, boy, the Tennessee fans are still worried about. Oh, look out. We don't play Florida well. We're not going to, oh, look out. I mean, we're, we're in trouble. I mean, it, 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 we're setting up for failure. I, I get all the doom and gloom. I get it. It's just what you're used to up there. However, let me just be clear and blunt. Tennessee's got the better team. It, it doesn't guarantee you that you're going to win. Outside for Florida, they're not, in a positive sense, um, they're not making a ton of mistakes. They're very silent. They're very well coached. Uh, they're not real smooth because, you know, like they're not getting a lot of penalties. They've just lost one fumble. Um they're net even in turnover margin. Um, they're a clean football team, except for stretches in the Kentucky game, no doubt against a good Kentucky defense, because they were forced to the air. Florida doesn't have enough of a passing game to drop back and hurt you. They've got to work off the run game, work play action, work the boots, get outside. Tennessee has only turned it over three times, but 24 penalties are alarmingly bad. Special teams have been very shaky. And by comparison, Florida is as good. Well, I think they're better in some a lot of areas, but they're as good, more athletic than Pitt. And Pitt gave Tennessee all they wanted. So I think there's it's not a lock. It really depends on how ten, if Tennessee plays a clean game. We'll get into more details in a second. But the offensive line has been strong. The running game has been great. Now the team has to do what it does best, get the dangerous runners in space, be more about grinding than trying to be sensational, and hit the Tennessee defense hard. Make that Tennessee defense playoff blocks, uh, I think that's a real problem if they have to do that, if Tennessee, for Tennessee, that is. Um, the Vols have looked good defensively, playing Ball State and Akron. Pitt was able to run a little bit, um, but tried to win the game through the air. That was a problem when, when Keaton Slovis got hurt. So Tennessee, you have to, you know, um, You've not had an, the type of explosive offense yet that 
that maybe would indicate that they're going to score a bunch of points. But you wonder if this is a little bit of a breakout game. Don't know. The running game has been pretty good. Anthony Richardson, um, the passing attack. Um, you know, if you slow down Florida's run, they have no ways to really beat you. Tennessee gets an early lead, and this could get ugly. Um, the Florida defense um, has not been really good in third downs. The run defense got run over by South Florida. Not enough of a pass rush to bother the ball back there. Um, Hendon Hooker's been pretty good. Um, so uh, there's a lot of ways in which Tennessee can win this game. Tennessee can get an early lead, force Florida through the air, in which they're not going to be really effective, I don't think, because I don't think they can keep up with Tennessee points-wise. Um, Tennessee, I think, can run the football and have balance and maybe control the game a little bit more and keep their defense fresher. But with Florida, there's one way they can win it. They're going to have to play a super clean game. They're going to have to run the football, wear Tennessee's defense out, and they're going to have to finish in the red zone. And then defensively, they're going to have to do a really good job of staying on top of routes, preventing the, the deep ball and, and force Tennessee into some field goals and, you know, make this game a, a compressed game, a short game, a low-scoring game, a phone booth game. Um. I think there's a scenario, and we just talked about it. Tennessee's not been clean in terms of penalties. Tennessee has not been um, really good on special teams. Creating a short field for Florida's offense is not recommended here. And Pitt, who's not as good as Florida, played Tennessee very well. So there's a scenario where Florida could give Tennessee some problems. Only if Tennessee doesn't play well. Tennessee plays well, they win. Tennessee plays really well and get an early lead, they'll win decisively. Will it happen? We'll go into a little bit more of at LandryFootball.com, so make sure that you check it out. Ole Miss hosts Tulsa in another tune-up game before they get Kentucky. The Golden Hurricane have been, um, look, they... They blew out Jacksonville State, and look, that's not that's a dangerous team. Um, it wasn't a problem. Now, Davis Brin was very successful. Um, Troy is, has a uh, bit of an air show. Georgia Tech in Central Arkansas, not very good. Now, the Rebel defense has to hold up. This is an offense that's better than they faced thus far. Tulsa has got a better offense than Georgia Tech and definitely Central Arkansas. So I'm curious to see how the, de the defenses look good, but against incredibly weak offenses. And again, that includes Georgia Tech. So even with this style of offense can control the clock against this Ole Miss defense, we'll see. Does that matter? Ole Miss goes up-tempo. They don't worry about time of possession. But for Tulsa, can they wear down Ole Miss's defense? And if you wear them down, you can have maybe better chunk plays against this Ole Miss defense. So I think we're gonna we're gonna get as much of a test as we're gonna get at this point in the season relative to Ole Miss's schedule about their defense. The Rebels' running game has been outstanding, and I know they played weak opponents, but I think this translates or more transferable to SEC play than their defense. This is the Lane Kiffin offense. They've made Matt Corral a, a big deal, throwing it around the yard. Um, it's the ground attack that's just taken everything by storm. They're fifth in the nation, which is just a stat. They're going to rip through Tulsa's defensive front. Um, I think they'll have a lot of success. The offensive line has been pretty good. The defense has been pretty good, again, relatively speaking. So this should be a lot of fun. Ole Miss hasn't allowed a lot of points. We'll see if they can. Um, they've allowed 13 points this year. Um, we'll see if they can hold Tulsa to kind of under 20. I think I think if you hold them 
to the teens, that's getting it done against this Tulsa offense. Um, so we'll see how this plays out. Obviously, it'll be an Ole Miss win, in my view, by how much. The line's 21 and a half. We'll, we'll got that for you at LandryFootball.com in more detail. Northern Illinois is at Kentucky. The Huskies have been able to move the football pretty well. They went against the nation's pass passing team in Tulsa, speaking of Tulsa, and lost in a good fight. They couldn't hold up against Vanderbilt. Uh, in a 38-28 win. Um, the O is not great closing out drives, though. The passing game has been pretty good. Kentucky hasn't been great in the red zone. It's no rushing offense without Chris Rodriguez back until October. And um, the O line's not playing well uh, up against Will Levis. So we'll see um, what happens. I do think... Northern Illinois struggles on the back end. I think Kentucky is able to light them up. Um, so, I mean, uh, I think it's a it's a big issue. Uh, Davis Brin, the aforementioned Tulsa quarterback, went off against his secondary. I think Levis gets it done here. I think they try to establish some confidence on the offensive line. Uh, is it going to be good enough to hold off Ole Miss? I think that's going to be key in a week. But this is tune-up week for Ole Miss and Kentucky as they have on a collision course for a week, uh, in a week now. Arkansas at A&M in Arlington Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Look, Max Johnson stabilized the offense for A&M. This offense is not all that good. It's from a passing game standpoint. They're going to have to be creative with getting the ball in the hands of playmakers on the screen game, the screen routes, that's that's the areas that they've got to get better with. Um, I think that's something that they've got to work on uh, immeasurably going forward. The running game and the defense is what AM can be good at, but they can only be as good as their offensive line will allow it. Um, I thought Johnson was good decision-making wise uh, against Miami. Um, he wasn't razor sharp as a passer. Uh, there's limitations there. I think that uh, some of their protections, some of their route concepts are flawed. And I think their passing game as a result is pretty average at this point. I do think you can throw the football on Arkansas. I, I, they're not the same team. They're not as good. They miss some key guys on the back end. Can a &M take advantage of it? This is an opportunity. Um, this is not a great Arkansas defense. Um, so it's better against the run. So it's, it's a uh, weak versus pass game for a and weak going up against the weakness of of Arkansas's defense and the run game, which is the strength, is going up against the strength of Arkansas. So that's going to be really key. The defense has been really good against the pass over the first three games for AM. It's allowing just over 300 yards a game and uh, it's got the line to hold up. I, you know, uh, you know, I think relatively speaking against Arkansas's run game, they're going to need to control that. Um, so we'll see. Uh, you know, when, the playmakers. Devin Shane has got to get the ball more. The receivers need to make more big plays. Um, AM hasn't shown it could take advantage of all the issues that the Arkansas defense is having. On the other side, the, the last thing a struggling offense needs to deal with is a pass rush. Arkansas is getting to the quarterback. So my concern is if AM can't run it well enough, if they can't stay out of bad down and distance situations, their pass protections are not going to hold up against Arkansas. Um, this is the last rank, the worst ranked offense in the SEC right now. It's the worst looking statistically. It's also pretty low down in the league in film grades. Arkansas can rush the passer. AM's not doing anything to control the clock. It's a deliberate team that needs to kind of fine and fine opportunities and chinks if you have them for them to attack. Um, 
and m is just keeping the ball for just over 25 minutes per game. Um, you know, even when Arkansas was lousy, it gave m and m a hard time in this matchup. But yet they haven't really won this game very frequently. They won it last year. It's going to be an interesting matchup. I've got a close pick here in a game that I think is going to be very close. Check it out at LandryFootball.com. I think it's the most intriguing game in the SEC this weekend. I know Florida, Tennessee is, and it may turn out to be the best game, but I think that game has more advantages to one team than the other. I think this game is a little bit closer than people might think, <clears throat> but I got a, a winner for you over at LandryFootball.com. Charlotte goes to South Carolina. Charlotte was awful over the first three weeks of the year. Florida Atlantic, William and Mary, Maryland. And uh, they pitched a strong game in that 42-41 road win over Georgia State. Remember, Georgia State gave South Carolina all they wanted. It took over 500 yards of total offense and a massive day for Chris Reynolds. South Carolina can't convert on third downs. Can't stop them. Can't stop the run. Can't stop turning the ball over. Can't stop anyone's offense. Um, uh, you know, so you got some real problems. Um, Georgia and Arkansas ran right over them. Um, it, it's time for the offense to step up. The defense... Can't stop the run. Charlotte will have some success, but you're going to have to move the football against a pretty bad Charlotte defense. You got to get Spencer Rattler going. You got to spread the ball around a bit. You got to get the running game going. Um, you got two SEC losses on the road, uh, rough SEC losses, rather. Um, not on the road. Uh, there's work to do this week. They got to get back on track. We'll see if South Carolina can make a statement against Charlotte this week. New Mexico at LSU. Lobos are scoring a little bit. They're not ripping it up. They're scoring at 27 points a game. The running game was solid against UTEP. The defense forced seven takeaways. The fourth in the nation in takeaways. It's just a number. It's an indication of what they're doing. Um, this is what we're going to expect out of LSU to gradually get better. They'll use this game developmental, developmentally speaking. Um, the running game is going to obviously take over and, and win this game decidedly. Vanderbilt, Alabama, this is um, a huge punch spread, a 40-point spread in the conference is eye-opening. Um, Commodore, Commodores are, look, they're, they're finding a way to win. Let me tell you how. Northern Illinois is not as good, but they roared back to beat them. So good for, for them. That's a, the best win Vanderbilt's had. I mean, Elon's awful and Hawaii's awful. <clears throat> and I will say that the Northern Illinois win is the best win that Vanderbilt has. The best performance is their 20-point loss to Wake Forest. It kind of tells you where Vanderbilt is. The offensive line's doing a better job of keeping defenses out of the backfield. Passing game has been pretty efficient. Um you know, the, the defense at Alabama is not forcing a lot of turnovers. Too many penalties against Texas. Um, but this is a blowout. I mean, this this they will dominate Vanderbilt like it's a non-conference opponent like Utah State or ULM. I think this is going to be a tough loss for Vanderbilt because after it, their hope here would be that they can be competitive for a while to at least show signs of progress. I have a feeling after this game, they will look at it, look at it as not much progress. But uh, Vanderbilt, I do think, is better than they were last year. They're just not good. In fact, they're not even good at all. So that's a look at it. Hey, that's a look around the games this weekend for all the latest information on recruiting and everything else going on around the SEC. Head on over to LandryFootball.com as we've got all the details and information for you there of what's going on inside information. And we've got even more detailed film room breakdowns in these games, along with some picks. So make sure that you check it out. We've got breakdowns of all the other games in the other conferences as well. So make sure that you check us out the NFL. So football season sale at LandryFootball.com is where you want to go and take advantage of it. And if you would please subscribe, like, and share. 
the Off the Hooks Sports YouTube channel, and the Landry Football Podcast Network. We'd appreciate you doing those two things, and uh, three things, actually, LandryFootball.com, and uh, signing up and subscribing, liking, and sharing uh, Off the Hook Sports YouTube channel and the Landry Football Podcast channel. We'll be back talking more football next time. We appreciate uh, you joining us. We'll break down all these games inside the SEC for your early part of next week. So keep it here on the Landry Football Podcast Network and Off the Hook Sports YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, and share, folks. Appreciate you. Talk to you next time.